so much for joining us on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. Today we take you to an extraordinary place at the Los Angeles International Airport. The USO at LAX is home away from home for millions of military men and women who serve our country. The center is 100% volunteer run and they need your help. Here's more about the USO at LAX. I know every day is different here. Tell us what it's like maybe on just a typical day being here when the Marines come in. <laughs> typical day, wow. Um, it just, it changes so drastically, but basically it's just prepping for the arrival of them on Tuesdays in particular. Um, we do get a, a count generally 24 hours before. We have a special uh, volunteer that follows up with the 29 Palms in Camp Pendleton to get the exact head count that's coming. Then we you know, send it on out to all the volunteers to prep them. Um, I order barbecue the night before because we do get people hosting it for us. And just prepping for the day, making sure everything is stocked, that we've got plenty of food, that the place is clean, and just getting everybody ready to accept them here, yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of amazing because these guys do so much for us mm -hmm. and it, they're so appreciative of the fact that they get to come to a place that feels like home to them. Talk about that. Well, the first part of it, though, is what you said is they're so appreciative. They are actually stunned that we are volunteering. They find that amazing. And here we are saying, but well, you're volunteering for something far greater so that gratitude you will never get such gratitude going around like in a circle back and forth back and forth with what they do and it's just I, I it's very hard to describe I consider it an honor and a privilege that I get to be here in that environment and just show some sort of gratitude to them and I know all the volunteers here it's just we it's your favorite part of the day and for me like I said I get to do it every day so it's even better well, we just try and, you know, have the atmosphere as if you were home. You know, would you have particular, you know, bowls for, you know, football season and the food? We always have hot dogs. That's a huge thing here at the center. Chili dogs, uh, peanut butter and jelly is a big hit, believe it or not. You know, the things that you really take for granted, they value it so much. And they just love it. They love they can come here and relax and, you know, watch TV, sleep, take a nap shower you know and just have that really nice environment and it doesn't cost them anything you know when they're straight in they don't make a lot of money no. so they really really appreciate it I, you know i was going to kind of go to that i noticed in the bathrooms there's toothbrushes toothpaste um can people donate that how do you get it absolutely we have a wish list that's also online um as well as here in the center um when anybody ever asks me i tell them imagine camping and you have no water and no electricity, what are you going to do? So those are the things that they need, um, and it is on the wish list. You know, So we take all those things gladly. We take them in and accept them, and they go out very quickly. It doesn't stay long here. Well, Tuesdays are very busy days at the USO. I had a chance to sit down with some military men and women who told me how appreciative they are of the work the volunteers do. Well, as United States Marines, um, coming into a USO, it's really great to have random volunteers welcoming you with open arms. Um, basically having a home away from home. You're tired, you're hungry, and you need a place to stay in. This is the first place that they send you to. And you walk in and you can smell the food. It smells great. <laughs> there's video games, there's TV, and whatever you may need, it's all here. And it's all at your discretion. It's great to just have people here that are your friends and it's just really great. The volunteers are amazing. It's uh, it's really nice just to come and be greeted like open-armed like you come in and everybody's all smiles and uh, it's it's warming. It's, it's like homey, you know, you, it's like uh, going to your aunt's house or you know, your, uh, you know, your grandma, whoever, whoever's that one person in your family that you go and they've always got like a pie cooking and you know, food on the table for when you get there. And what kind of food did you guys have today? It looked pretty good. It smells awfully good. Um, I had ribs, coleslaw, and some cornbread, and some baked beans. Um, but there was also some chicken and some other stuff. So, I mean, there was a whole variety of, of whatever I could want. What do you like to do while you're here? Uh, it depends on how long I'm waiting. Like, my flight isn't until, like, 22.50, so I'll be waiting a long time. I'll probably take a nap, maybe watch a movie. I don't know. I'll be here a long time, so I have a lot of stuff I can do. They greet you kindly. They're nice people. They tell you, you know, where, 
uh, what to do. So for this one, we marked our bags, and they said they have food for us, and we can relax till our flight takes off. And we pretty much get to relax in here, Great, talk to very kind people and other Marines, and we all get to chit and chat until our flight takes off, and we all can just kind of hang out in here, so it's kind of nice. Very nice. And then what did they have for you for lunch today? I had a sandwich. They had ribs and all that kind of stuff. I didn't eat that kind of stuff, though. It, 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 you know, it seems like there's a lot of other stuff too. <laughs> we were noticing there was donuts, chocolate, all kind of things. Yeah, there there is. There's a lot of stuff. Try and fatten us up. <laughs> and so uh, you said that you, you you have quite a long time before your flight takes off. Uh, about eight hours, yes. Okay. So well, what will you do? Will you? I know some people leave or some people just kind of hang out. What what's your plan? I'm looking towards just hanging in here, uh, being on the computer, eating, and enjoying my time here while I can. Many of the items we take for granted on a daily basis are more than meaningful to a soldier, so sponsorships are very important to keep the center up and running. Delta Airlines, Northrop, Delaware North, the Gary Sinise Foundation, um, uh, Jersey Mike's is a big one. Um, Starbucks donates uh, quite a bit to us, as well as Susie Cakes. We get Dunkin' Donuts, the Hudson Group. Uh, they are the kiosks within the airport, and they do a, a drive, and so they give us phone cards so that they can do long-distance calling and so forth. That's just some of them. I notice a lot of computers and things like that. Is that something that is donated? It as well? They're almost really about 90% of the things that you'll see around the center are donated. We recently got from the WASH group, which is multi family um, organization, is what they're called basically. They donated us a brand new washer and dryer, $3,500 commercial grade. We just got a new refrigerator for additional fresh storage, uh, towels, blankets, you know, get donated. Everything is pretty much donated here as much as possible. The televisions, the computers, all those things are donated or we get grants that are written to give us that. In addition to sponsoring lunch, many Delta crew members give of their time serving lunch and visiting with the soldiers. Delta, um, the community outreach, uh, sponsors this um, catered lunch every uh, month for them. We bring in all the food and then volunteers hit and serve the young men and women as they finished up basic training and they're heading out on assignments tonight. So they kind of around the airport for the day um, or for the afternoon and it gives a chance to get a little bit of food into them, a little bit of different food than maybe chow hall marine food. And, uh, and so usually they usually hit it pretty hard and they, they usually seem to enjoy it. Um, I, I think I've been here every month since uh, June um, for this, and um, you know Delta encourages it. Uh, flight operations and in-flight have been a part of it, and um, it's just a chance to give back. I'm a former veteran, and uh, it's a chance to see these young Marines and come through everything. It, it's it's real inspiring to do and a lot of fun to come. So you know, it, it's interesting because um, in in addition to your regular jobs, you have to know how to serve food too, right? <laughs> <laughs> and in my case, I don't know. They keep me far away from the food, but but I can go out there and hand out baggage tags and tell direct the um, Marines where to uh, store the bags and how to get them set up here. I'm probably better at that. Yeah, I was going to ask, do you get a chance to talk to the Marines while you're here? Absolutely. It's it's fun to welcome them. when the, It comes in a big rush, but when we get a chance, um, it's fun to see where they're where they're from and where they're going because tonight because they head out on flights all over the country to their follow-on training assignment and so usually it's like welcome to LA guys how you doing um, where are you off to and they'll tell you I'm going off to um, mechanic school or I'm going off to infantry or I'm going off to whatever specialty school they're going to they're very excited about it and usually they'll you can you can find out what part of the country they're going to oh you're gonna have a great time in Florida or in Virginia or Columbus or wherever they're going off to you know it's kind of cool because you guys actually go to all these yeah. places this is so yeah. you know about that. that. And actually, Rick could be flying them tonight, you know, <laughs> at, at various times. But yes, so I've been to most of the places where they talk about their bases are. And I've been to actually been on the bases um, when in my former time in the military. So I've been to many of the bases that they are going to off to. Being a volunteer is a labor of love, and you can feel the love all the way around when you enter this building. It's just, it's an incredible feeling. I don't think you can get this kind of feeling really anywhere else where there's so such appreciation that each person exists, you know, and that the most basic things in life really matter. And it's, it's those things that, 
that count. So yeah, it goes a long way. And we have such a strong support system, not only from the volunteers, but LA World Airports is a huge sponsor of you know the organization here. And they look out for us all the time, the, the LA World Airports Police Department. That's huge, checking in on us. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a really great environment. My background is in personnel and I enjoy finding people jobs. So this is finding people jobs except they don't get paid. Yes. And so I started helping her and then I, uh, about a year and a half after I started, I started doing the volunteer coordination. Um, we don't do any advertising really, but I get all of the applications and uh, I call everybody talk to them, basically do an interview over the phone, um, let them know what openings that we have. Um, in order to become a volunteer, there has to be an opening. Um, so, um, and then I do the training. It's a four hour one-on-one -on -one training session. And then uh, usually uh, the rest of the learning is basically on the job with the other volunteers. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that. What, what is the training? What does that include? It includes, well, it, it's different for different people. We have people who have a military background. Either they grew up in, their parents were in the military or they were in the military. So they have a better, or they're a spouse. Um, so they have a little bit better understanding um, than someone who has never been in the military. And we do have those types of volunteers as well. Um, a lot of the people we get uh, maybe their child has gone into the military and they want to give back in some way uh, or their spouse or retired military. So part of the training is learning about um, the different IDs, the military IDs, because we allow an active duty retired military and reservists and their dependents as well as mil active military from foreign countries. And so they all have a different military ID. So uh, part of that is learning what those IDs look like. We always ask where are you headed, what time is your flight, what can we do for you. So uh, that's a big part of the training of, is learning about what we can do and also what we can't do. So um, then it's also learning about the kitchen and where things are and how we make sandwiches and what we have available and also you cleaning the facility up and what we do with that. So it is a learning process, but most of the learning, the training is about the front desk and the resources that we have available and um, the types of information that we need to get from people when they come in. It's four hour shifts, 24 hours a day. Once in a while we'll get volunteers that will do a shift back to back depending on what the need is, but it is four hour shifts, yeah. During the week we have three to four during the day. The shifts at night, the 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. and the 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., we have two people on a shift. And where are you most in need? Uh, probably the 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. shift is the one that we need the most people. Usually those volunteers come in every other week or every third week depending on the day of the week and the shift. So it's not every week. Um, and it's usually part of that time can be pretty quiet and then part of that time can be very busy. So we never can predict. People are very good. Um, we rarely have someone who doesn't come in when they're supposed to be there for their shift. Uh, so people are very dedicated. And we don't have a lot of people leave uh, because they don't want to leave. Maybe they're leaving because they're moving out of state or you know, they have to take care of a sick parent or something like that. But people don't leave because they don't like volunteering. Um, everybody loves it. Um, so it's, uh, but the 2 a.m. shift is probably the one that has the most burnout just because it's it's hard on your body. Sure. But we do have people who love being up at that time of night and thank goodness for them because I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> What's different when a family comes through? Well, a lot of times they're transitioning. It can be either leaving from the States, going to a foreign country, or vice versa. So it can be a little bit more stressful for them. So that one is really important. You get, and when you get the moms traveling by themselves with the kids, so we really reach out to them and you know really help them. Many a times we'll walk over to the terminals, help them go over there, load to the aircraft. You know, We are in touch with the airlines quite a bit, and they 
um, really appreciate us helping them out and alerting them when there's you know military movement so we get it, it's a give and take very well yeah yeah we noticed that because we picked this room this is the family room and it's right. pretty cool <laughs> yeah it is this was painted by Northrop by the employees okay. um, and they do a huge amount like I said Northrop Corporation themselves but the employees do fundraising constantly for us they do little carnivals and um, just little contests with each other and and it's amazing the amount of donations we get from them. It really is. Good. We need to keep them coming. Yeah, that's exactly right. Unfortunately, there's never enough. There really isn't. It's it's a constant flow. And so because we're a hundred percent nonprofit, you know, and donation driven, it's very important. Yeah. Jasmine, we noticed that you came in with your family and your, your kids and your husband. Tell us um, about coming here to the USO and, and what you do when you stop through. It's just nice to come here after a long flight or to wait for my family to get here after their flight. And they always feed us and everything's free, which is really nice for us and convenient. I noticed the kids enjoy it too. It's sort of like a home for them, huh? Yes, they already know where to go. They know that there's a playroom. They can go play with the toys and read the books. So they're like home. <laughs> All of our volunteers are are wonderful and they're just a, a great group of people. They're dedicated and love what they do so and it shows in how they treat our guests. How did you get involved in all this? Well you know I actually took a leadership course, some training several years ago and I myself am a Navy brat from way back and I didn't realize how much I enjoyed that and valued you know growing up in that environment. And I just found out it was a huge passion of mine. So I started volunteering. I just called up. A slot was open because it's not just something you walk into. You have to qualify. And um, started volunteering on Wednesday nights from 6 to 10. And then this opportunity presented itself, and I threw my hat into the arena, and magic, I got it. <laughs> what is the toughest part of your job? The toughest part of my job? Um, I'm not sure there's a tough part. I would say making myself go home. <laughs> making myself go home. Yeah. I stay here a lot, you know, but I really, really enjoy it. And I have friends and family, but I really love being here. I really do. Well, they say there's no place like home, but the USO at LAX comes pretty close. And if you would like to volunteer or get more information, you can go to their website at bobhopeuso.org. I'm Maria Sorrell. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.